This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to talk about 802.1 W spanning tree configuration on the ICX series platform. So, um, this is done on a per VLAN basis normally. Um, you can run it as a single spanning tree should you wish to, uh, but normally it's done on a per VLAN basis. So, the first thing we're going to do is go into our VLAN. So, VLAN 1, we'll just configure the default VLAN for now. And um, so what we want to do is we need to turn it on. So um, it is spanning dash tree 802 dash 1w, not dot 1w, to, to enable it. So that's all you need to do for a, to, to enable it in the basic mode. Then uh, best practice says you should always choose a root bridge priority. So uh, root bridge priority by default is 32,768 decimal or 8,000 hex, um, but you could choose you could set that anywhere from zero to 65535. So if we have a look at the current topology, um, show 802-1w, um, just you know without setting any parameters here, we can see that it's it's per VLAN, so it's VLAN one. It's 802.1w. Um, here's my bridge identifier. So this bridge identifier is how we choose who the root bridge is and how we choose who the designated bridge is. So in this case, um, my priority is set to the default, 32,768 decimal, which is 8,000 hex, plus my MAC address. And that's what makes up the bridge identifier. Um, the bridge max age, hello time, forward delay, these are are used only for backwards compatibility. So 802.1w is always backwards compatible with 802.1d. So those are used for backwards compatibility reason. Then we see the root bridge identifier here. And so the root bridge identifier is not me. It's another device. So even though the priority is the same, it's a different MAC address. So if, assuming the priorities are the same, it's going to choose the root bridge based on the lowest MAC address. So this device has a lower MAC address than me. So it became the root bridge. We can see that my uh, root path cost is 2000. So it's 2000 to get to that root bridge. Um, and then here we see my root port. So I'm going out port one slash two slash one in order to get to that root bridge. And then if we look at uh, my ports down here, we'll just hop down to those. So I have one slash two slash one with a priority of 128, which is the default port priority. And, and that's used in the case that you have um, the same path cost to get to, to a, the root bridge. Um, you have the same designated bridge. So essentially you have two ports going from one bridge to another bridge and you have to make a decision which one to block, then it's going to use that port cost. So in this case, we have exactly that scenario. So we see one slash two slash one is in is root forwarding. So it's it's my root port and it's in forwarding state. And one slash two slash three is actually in an alternate discarding state. So the way it's calculated that is since they're both the same priority, the same port priority, it, it uses priority plus port number. So port number one is a lower port number because they're the same priority. It wins the election and becomes the root port or the forwarding port. And the higher port number of port three in this case is loses the election and becomes the alternate discarding or what you would think of in, in 802.1d as blocking. So that's the basics of that. And then let's say we want to become the root bridge. So we would have to change our priority to something lower. So we'll go back into span 802-1w and set a priority on our port. So let's, well, we'll be priority zero. We might as well. So now if I go back and do that show um, 802-1w again, you will now see that my bridge identifiers changed to 0000 and my MAC address as opposed to 8000. Because I changed my priority, it uh, now changes my bridge identifier because it's priority plus MAC. And then we also look down here at the root bridge identifier. So I am now the root bridge. I have a root path cost of zero because I am the root bridge, so there's no cost to get to me. Uh, and lastly, my root port says root. So I don't, I'm not going out any port to get to the root bridge. I am the root bridge. And so in this case, both of my ports are now in forwarding state 
they're they're both designated ports there is no root port on the root bridge so they're in designated state and both forwarding so it's actually the, the device at the other end of this link that is now uh, one of those ports is in an alternate discarding state um, okay so the other best practice what you should do um, the the 802.1w standard says you're allow you're supposed to allow for a broadcast domain in between your um, rapid span entry devices. So if somebody takes a hub and sticks it in between two or three or, or, or more rapid span entry devices, you're supposed to allow for that. But if you know for sure that there's a point to point link between two rapid span entry bridges, then you, you need to turn that on on the interfaces. So uh, in this case, we're gonna go into interface E1 slash two slash one, and we're gonna do a spanning tree um 802-1 w and then we have a two options here admin edge port or admin point to point mac so what we're going to do is configure this for admin point to point mac which is says don't allow for a broadcast domain assume there is a point to point link between two rapid spanning tree bridges and the difference this is going to make is without it it'll fail over in two seconds or less but the fail back takes the traditional 30 seconds of listening learning because you're you're awaiting that broadcast domain um, but if we do a point-to-point -point mac then it will fail over and fail back in uh, two seconds or less or yeah, it's, it's only two seconds in the event the root bridge fails if it's any other link or bridge it's less than a second of failover time so that's what we do on our on our point-to-point -point links between bridges so uh, and then one slash two slash three is the other port so we'll do the same thing uh, and then uh, for the edge ports so we'll do interface e one slash one slash one to one excuse me one slash one slash 24 which is going to be our regular gig ports that goes out to client machines um, we are going to sp set those up as a uh, span 802-1w admin edge port um, so so we'll set those up as edge ports which uh, that's an optional parameter, but really it means that topology changes on the edge is not going to um, cause reconvergence in the, on the core links or vice versa. So if we do a quick look at, at my uh, configuration here. I can see under VLAN 1, I see span tree 802-1W. I can see span tree 802-1W priority. So I, made, I lowered my priority from the default of, of 32,768. Then on all my edge ports, I see that span tree 802-1W admin edge port uh, for port 1 to 24 as I configured. And then for my uplinks here, I see those as span tree 802-1W admin point to point Mac on both of those. So it's just saying fail over and fail back quickly. So one last look at uh, show 802-1W. Um, what we're gonna see here uh, hopefully this doesn't roll off. Here we go. So here's all my ports, right? Here's the priority, the port cost, etc. Um, now these are configured for. Uh, you'll see these configured as point-to-point -point MAC here. Uh, so so true versus false. So these are configured. Uh, even though I went in and I configured all my edge ports as uh, as admin edge port, they're showing as false because none of these ports are up. As soon as one of them comes up, that'll that'll that false will change to a true. But um, these two uplinks here are actually up and alive. So we can see that point to point Mac is true and uh, edge port is false. So obviously it can't be the same thing at the same, it can't be edge port and point to point at the same time. Um, but those two we configured as, as um, point to point Mac. So uh, there is obviously other parameters you can set in, uh, in rapid spanning tree, but that's the basics and that's what you would do in almost all cases. It's, it's rare you would change other parameters. So that's it. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.